Hi everybody, welcome to another video. Today I would like to talk about the calculation of the magnetic field. So if we look at Bio Savalo, that's how you would calculate the magnetic field, right? We, we have a formula and the magnetic field should only depend basically on the geometry and on the current, right? And of course I will not solve Bio Savalo's here. What I will do is I will use CST Studio and I set up a simple model with a loop and we measure the magnetic field in the center. Right here where a cube is, there is also a probe placed. And we look at the magnetic field. What we get is a, it's a flat curve. Of course, we have fed the loop with one ampere of current and we get a constant magnetic field over the whole frequency band. So what's the problem? Oh, how, how did I come to this example? Is actually I was working on something different and this is a setup like this. We have a, a, a metallic plane with some finite thickness and a wire which is reference to, the, to this metallic plane. We measured the magnetic field at some section just uh, a little bit away from the wire here with the cupis. And if we do this, we will see that the magnetic field in this case is becoming frequency dependent. And I was asked, why is this happening? Is this maybe some, some inaccuracy of the solver? Can a solver, I mean, this is our frequency domain, um, basically what we call the high frequency solver and we're solving down to one hertz. So is there a problem with the accuracy of the solver? That's what I was asked and I uh, digged into the model. What is happening here? So you see that starting at around one kilohertz, the magnetic field is increased. And I wanted to find out where, why is this happening. So the first thing I did is actually I changed the metallic plane that we saw here, which here is a so-called normal material. It's a volumetric conductor. I changed it to a PEC plane, right? So this is a, a P, PEC material type. And if we look at the PEC material type and we look now at the magnetic field with what ampere, it's almost flat. It's 2.91. So this is a, basically a flat curve. So if we go set it from two to three, we see it's a flat curve, what we get here. So it seems like in this one setup where we have a normal material, there is a frequency dependence in the magnetic field. But how does that go along with the bio law, which says there is no frequency dependence? And this, the explanation lies in the way the current is actually distributed on the return plane, right? So for a PEC plane, what does PEC mean? PEC means that there is no resistance, right? So what? how will the current look on this metallic plane? If there is no resistance in the material and the, the basically the impedance is only governed by the by the inductance along the path we see that the current distribution on this on the surface is exactly the same for all frequencies right there is no resistance however at low frequencies below the one kilohertz the impedance will be governed by the resistance which means that actually the return current on the plane or the current on the plane, whatever you want to call it, will have a, a, a distinct distribution. Oh, sorry, that's the loop. We have to go here. If we go to the normal plane and we now look at the current density. Obviously at one megahertz, oh, this is one kilohertz. At one kilohertz, it's getting close to what we saw on the PEC side, right? it's mainly located below the wire. However, if we go down with the frequency, that's basically 100 Hertz, 10 Hertz and one Hertz, you clearly see that of course the return current will have a distribution. It will be over the, basically over the complete surface. And now of course this return current is also a source of the magnetic field. And this will lead to the fact that basically below the small cube where we measure the magnetic field, there will be a higher field because the distribution between the, between the higher frequency return current and this very low frequency return current is different. 
So that means that the source current, which we use in Bio Savar's law, will be different. And of course, it is there. I mean, for Bio Savar's law, this is Bio Savar's law in terms of uh, wires, but it can be also defined in terms of a volumetric current. And it still does not contain a frequency dependence, right? This formula. But the distribution of the current is now frequency dependent, which leads to the fact that in the end we see a different magnetic field at this very low frequencies. And we can check this even a little bit further. So what we have is the magnetic field of a PC plane, like we have seen before, and a normal material, which is a volumetric conductor. Then we can use a so-called lossy metal. So lossy metal is actually a high frequency method, which uh, which is approximating the resistance of the which is approximating the resistance of the plane, working very well at high frequencies. We can see basically up to one kilohertz. The lossy metal is completely in agreement with this volumetric conductor, and the lossy metal has the advantage that it only uh, needs to mesh the surface. It doesn't need to mesh the volume. However, at this very low frequencies, as expected. Uh, the lossy metal is, is not as accurate as a volumetric conductor. What's the alternative is, for example, to use a so-called tin panel material, which you see, which again agrees very well with the normal material, because it can model the surface impedance in a more accurate way than lossy metal. Lossy metal is just not made for these low frequencies. So you see, even maybe your intuition says that the a magnetic field should not be frequency dependent. It always comes down to 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 the shape, to to the geometry we are modeling. And because the plane is large and the current distribution on the plane changes, we get actually a frequency dependence at the position at which we have measured the magnetic field. I found this very interesting. It's a short video today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Bye bye and see you next time.